Ladies and gentlemen, if we can put our own hands together and clap for Jason Sawinski, our city manager, to give the address, the state of the city. Thank you. Thank you very much, Leslie. Uh, good afternoon. I want to thank you all for being here today. Very nice to see you. Uh, extend my thanks to the Chamber of Commerce for uh, putting this event together. Thank you, Leslie. Also, thank you to the American Mountaineering Center folks and uh, our friends over at Table Mountain Inn for the delicious food. Let's give them another round of applause for all their efforts. I also want to thank our uh, city council for being here today and for their continued leadership and support. Uh, the efforts they all put in on a regular basis help make our city special. And we are grateful for those efforts. So I want to take a moment to introduce them. Uh, first, our mayor, Marjorie Sloan. <laughs> Councilor Sarah, Sersha Karis Graves. And our newest uh, counselors, uh, Rob Reed, is here. And Counselor Jim Dale is here. Uh, unfortunately, our uh, Mayor Pro Tem, Casey Brown, and Counselors uh, Laura Weinberg and Paul Haseman could not join us today, um, but we thank them as well for their efforts. I'd also like to recognize our uh, department directors that are here today. Uh, they're an important part of our team and help keep the city uh, in the shape that it is. Uh, so would you uh, wave or stand when I call, call your name? First, uh, our police chief, Bill Kilpatrick, is here. <laughs> our public works director, Dan Hartman. <laughs> our community and economic development director, Steve Glick. Our city attorney is here, Dave Williamson. Our finance director, Jeff Hansen. Our parks and recreation director, Rod Tarullo. And our communications manager and PIO, Carlin Tilly. Carlin and her team do all the wonderful uh, graphics and videos that you'll be seeing, so a special thanks to them. Uh, the newest member of our management team is Giles McCoy. He's the Innovation and Technology Director. And finally, two special mentions today. Um, at the end of March, our longtime city clerk, Susan Brooks, retired from her service to the city after 39 years on the job. So today we have Andrea DeLuca here, our deputy city clerk, who is, who is filling in. Andrea? And last but not least, our fire chief, John Bales. John has just announced last week that he will be retiring from his service as fire chief for the city of Golden in October of this year. And he served the city for 18 years and 50, 5 zero, 50 years in the fire service altogether. So congratulations to you, John. I know this will be your last state of the city, unless you want to come back in next April for, for the fun of it. He said yes. All right, I have a lot to talk about today. We have a lot of fun stuff, a lot of ground to cover, so I'm going to jump right in. I'm going to start my conversation by telling you something that you might not know about me. Most of you will be surprised to learn that your city manager is part owner of an NFL franchise. It's true. I have an ownership interest in, the, in a National Football League team complete with voting rights and all. Now, before you leap out of your chairs and wonder how much city council must pay this guy, allow me to explain. Uh, most of you know that prior to becoming Golden City Manager in 2015, I spent most of my adult working life in Chicago. It's where I got into this field of city management. It's where 
Uh, my kids were born, where I bought my first house, and it holds a special place in my heart. But Illinois is not my home state. That honor goes to Wisconsin, the great land of cheese, dairy, some beer, and a little football team called the Green Bay Packers. <laughs> so one of the things you have to understand about people who were born in Wisconsin is that before you leave the hospital, they implant in your brain these little pieces of cheddar. <laughs> and they eventually grow into an affinity for all things cheese related and for this football team called the Packers. So even for folks like me who have left the state and who've been shaped by different experiences in places like Washington, D.C. and Chicago, and now Golden, Colorado, um, I still cannot escape cheese and the Packers. In fact, I'm feeling a little nostalgic and inspired. How's that? What? You've never seen a city manager in a cheese head before? All right, I'll take it off. I'll take it off. Not because it's goofy looking, but just because I don't want to mess up my hair. So how can I uh, be part owner of a football team, you ask? Well, I'm not some closet billionaire, and I didn't inherit millions of dollars from a trust fund and decided to buy a sports franchise and do the city manager thing for fun. You see, the truth is, the Green Bay Packers are the only professional sports franchise in all of America that is a publicly owned, not-for-profit corporation. Not owned by some billionaire investor, but it's owned by the people. People like me who have a connection to the state of Wisconsin. So almost 25 years ago, I took the few dollars that I had in my pocket and I purchased a share of stock that the Packers held in a, in a stock sale. And today I continue to own that stock and have voting rights in administrative matters related to the team. This arrangement of the Packers being owned by the people and not some billionaire ensures that the team will continue to be guided by core values and interests of its supporters. Why else would a professional sports franchise remain in perhaps the coldest place on earth <laughs> and in a town that is smaller in size than Lakewood is? Surely any billionaire investor would as motivated by profits would move the team to a larger market in a much warmer climate. But that's not what motivates the Packers organization. They're guided by their stakeholders and they're motivated by their core values, having a connectedness with the community, giving back to the community that supports them, and bringing competitive winning football to the heartland of America. So as the landscape of professional sports in America changes, with teams always relocating to different cities and building new stadiums, all the things that we hate as fans because we can't keep track of what's happening out there, the Packers have been in the same city since 1919 and have played in the same stadium since 1957, holding true to their core values and what has become really a remarkable story. Now, you might be asking yourself, what the hell is he talking about? <laughs> and what does this have to do with the state of our city? Well, the way I see it, the Green Bay Packers and the city of Golden remind me a lot of each other. They have a lot in common. For starters, they both start with the letter G. <laughs> Just kidding. No, both, both organizations are guided by core values and a long-term focus, not on short-term gain or profits. These values are not decided by one person, 
but rather are derived from the community as a whole. Change is managed by making decisions together. And while sometimes we might not agree on the outcome, we can be confident that all of us have been heard and have had the ability to participate in those decisions. In the 1990s, when the Packers found themselves as a financially less competitive team, they, they could have moved their team to a different city or built a new stadium or brought in some billionaire investor all to get the revenue that they needed to compete, but instead they engaged their shareholders and they decided that they could get the revenue they needed right where they were, just by adding a few amenities to, to their existing stadium. Not everyone liked it, but all 360,000 of us stockholders had input. And collectively, those decisions are made to ensure the team holds true to its core values and can continue to thrive. And the same thing is true here in Golden. When we are confronted by tough decisions, our values guide us in making the best decisions for Golden. They might not always be perfect decisions. Sometimes there simply aren't perfect answers for wicked problems. But we can be assured that we arrive at what is right for Golden. When confronted with change, our core values help us determine whether that change is appropriate for Golden. And they guide us on how best to deal with change, sometimes even uninvited change. These values are spelled out in Golden Vision 2030, and they tell us that collectively we will direct and manage change, not just let it happen to us. Let's take marijuana, for example. Back in 2012, when Colorado voters decided to allow recreational marijuana, the sale of it in the state, Golden said in response, wait a second, let's look at this issue a little closer. We need to decide what is right for us. And so we did. Collectively, we all understood the importance of efficient movement of traffic through our valley, but we were not willing to accept a six-lane superhighway. So instead, we directed and we managed that change, and today we have the Golden Plan, our plan, what is best for our city. And the result is a fantastic project at US 6 and 19th Street. Now, when meeting members of our community, I often hear, I love Golden. I want it to be just like it is. I don't want it to change. My instinct is always to respond with a question, just like it is when? April 9th, 2018? Or maybe last month on March 9th? Or maybe 2010 or 2000? Or what about the 1990s? Some of you in this room will remember Golden, have been in Golden long enough and will remember Golden in the 1970s and 1980s. And I'm guessing of those that do, some of you would also remind us that maybe we wouldn't want to go back to some of those parts of Golden. The point is that Golden has and is constantly changing and evolving. At one time, Golden existed before it had a welcome arch that spanned Washington Avenue. And now that arch is a local landmark to us. There was a golden that existed before streets were paved or before there was an M on the mountainside. Cities are living, breathing creatures. They are organic. And our challenge as individuals is to think about those parts of golden that we identify with that are part of our community's DNA. We need to think about what things are right for change in Golden, and what aspects of our community that we need to protect. The truth is, people do not fear change, they fear loss. The loss of what might have been important to them at a particularly meaningful time in their lives. That's natural. That's part of what makes us all human beings. But part of what we do so well in Golden, want to know what it is? As a community, we care. We love people through that loss 
and by falling back on our core values, we help them identify with the change that they've been experiencing. Change that we can accept, change that is true to our core values, change that will move our city forward collectively and ensure a bright city, a bright future for our city. That's what makes us unique. It's what makes us special. You don't get that in every city in America. There's only a special few where you can get that, and I would submit to you that we are one of them. Now, recently, I've had one of the greatest privileges in my career. I was able to sit down and talk to and learn from some of our most important citizens. In fact, I think the most important citizens. I asked them the same questions that I asked you all to ponder just now. It was a fun, relaxed atmosphere, and I want to share some of it with you. So here's what they had to say. Take a look. I'm Jason. I'm the city manager here in Golden. So what we're trying to do is figure out um, what you really like about Golden, right? And what you think Golden should be like in the future. Right, so how many of you live in Golden or spend a lot of time in Golden, right? Okay. I actually was born in Golden. You were born in Golden? Golden's my nature. <laughs> <laughs> So, what's your favorite thing about living in Golden? I um, like how the mountains are sort of a barricade around the little town. How about you? I like the mountains, too. You like the mountains? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's your favorite part about the mountains? Because you can go hiking and there's wildlife. I like how it's the small town feeling without being in the middle of nowhere. Anybody else? I guess I would say I like the uniqueness of it. Things like the Super Cruise, the Buffalo Bill days. My family for years has had the tradition of going to the farmer's market every year. I like this small town shopping that you can find things in Golden that you can't really find anywhere else. All the little stores in Golden and all, on how go and Golden is really kind. It's really kind? Yeah. Yeah, Golden is pretty kind. It's very welcoming and people are very friendly. It's kind of just a very peaceful place to be and I love going downtown and getting ice cream. There's a lot of dogs in Golden. <laughs> we have a uh, opportunity to ha have a good education and there's a lot of like paths and areas that we can mountain bike, hike. Okay, Xavier, it's up to you. I like the fact that New York is in Golden, I mean, in Colorado. Not? So here's another question for you. What if I gave you a magic wand and you could change anything you wanted to change about Golden? What would you change? I would change nothing about Golden because it's the, I like Golden how the way it is. How about you? I want a petting zoo. You want a petting zoo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. An indoor skate park at the Golden Rec Center. I would like to have something kind of like a massive turf indoor field. A place where you can, where it's only kids only, and you walk in and there's just a buffet of ice cream and adults are not allowed. And adults are not allowed. So I can come in and get an ice cream? No. no. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. I think a beach would be really cool. Because <laughs> there's so much like poop in the fields, it's disgusting. <laughs> there's so much poop everywhere from the geese, and then in our field, from the rabbits. Yeah. There's big clumps, yeah. clumps of deer poop or what? Whoever poops there. You need a city department that's all about poop. I've taken it, right? <laughs> to get rid of all the poop. Yes. We changed the subject. This we'll is kind of disgusting. We'll work on that. Just by talking so about here's it. another question for you. What things would, would uh, you think make gold, take Golden to the next level? I was recently down in Scottsdale, it was pretty cool. I saw people doing like swagway tours and um, bike tours throughout the entire city. And it was just a really cool way to like get to know where you were and to like, for like tourist attractions and stuff, that was pretty cool. You could do something like a chairlift for the uh, river. Ooh, that, that was so cool. cool. So you guys like riding down Clear, Clear Creek on your tubes, right? Oh yeah. Definitely. You just don't like the walk back. <laughs> the walk back's not fun. For there to be 
like a home for people who are homeless for a shelter for them to live in? Yeah. To make uh, freedom of religion and race better? Making the LGBTQ community within Golden something that's a more integral part of our actual community as opposed to just a community that exists within our school. So what is Golden going to look like a hundred years from now? What do you think? Um, Golden is going to be a safe community and Colorado School of Mines is still going to be here. In the future we should kind of conserve that um, we still learn about the 1800s and 1900s when there were gold miners here, but still kind of make it a more modern community at the same time. Non-smoking hoverboards that release nothing into the atmosphere, clean air only. I would hope that there were maybe new technology and um, maybe more solar panels and things so that um, it's not as polluted. Maybe we'll have like a, a ski mountain. Probably be flying shoes. We got shoes that can fly. Lift off. Flying shoes. Flying shoes. Just like teleportation things. Yeah. So it would be like an elevator that just put you in like a whole different state maybe. I think the architecture is going to stay the same. I kind of like western feel to it. What about the arch? You think the arch will still be here? Oh yeah. I hope so. Yeah. 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 The M on the mountain side. Well, what's golden without the M anyways? Or the G on the side of the mesa? It's the last question. Are there, th are there, what things in golden do you think won't change that'll always be the same? We need school, so I don't think the schools are going to change. Yeah, people will st still always be here. Golden will stay as a small town and cores will still be here. Golden is still going to be alive, not yeah. like ever. We're going to still have mountains. Still have books. And make more libraries. Golden will still be a safe town. Golden will still be a safe town. Do you feel safe in Golden? Yeah. Yeah. I would kind of hope that it would keep its old western vibe like it does now, because I do think that is one of the appeals of Golden and why people love it so much. I'm hoping that everyone is still so nice as they are, so. So is that what makes Golden really special, that we're all really nice to each other? Yeah. Thank you for, thank you for uh, being here. Now you need to help me get out of this chair. <laughs> so we know that Coors will still be here, and the School of Mines will still be here. I'm still trying to get my head wrapped around that whole flying shoes thing. <laughs> but I gotta tell you, meeting with these students was a lot of fun. And uh, not only did we talk about flying shoes and hoverboards and kids-only ice cream, but we talked about teleporting machines and flying cars, and we even debated whether 100 years from now, robots would rule golden and whether humans would even exist. And we eventually all decided that humans would exist because after all, someone's got to replace the batteries in the robots. <laughs> but as you saw, these conversations were fun. And perhaps most importantly, they taught me about our city through the eyes of its future. And boy, was that ever enlightening. We talked about important stuff, grown-up stuff, like inclusion and discrimination and affordable housing. One student shared with me that she hoped Golden would be less expensive in the future. Because in her words, after her family pays all the bills, they only have $15 left and that doesn't buy much. I left my meetings with these students with three main takeaways. One, these future leaders of Golden will be dealing with issues that all of us in this room can't even imagine or comprehend. How do we regulate parking for flying cars? <laughs> or speed limits for flying shoes? I'm glad I won't have to deal with those issues. Two, these Golden citizens want some change in Golden. While they appreciate how special our city is, there are things that they think could make Golden even better. And when you give them that magic wand to change Golden, their eyes light up with possibility. And three, perhaps the most surprising thing to me, 
What matters to these young people are the same things that matter to all of us in this room. The same core values. Inclusion, a sense of safety, a healthy and vibrant community that retains its small town charm, a feeling of connectedness with one another, that we like each other, that we care about each other. These values were important to them and were things that they mentioned when they were asked what they like best about Golden. And what that says to me is that our city is in good hands. When those students are the ones filling this room, sitting in our chairs, leading our businesses, serving on our city council, and even standing at this podium, Golden is gonna be just fine. It might look different, it might have flying shoes, but it's gonna be just fine because our core values will remain. I wanna give a special thank you and shout out to my friends, my new friends at Shelton and Mitchell and Golden High School for allowing me to spend time with, with you and for you to share your thoughts about our city with me. I had a blast, it was a lot of fun. Give them another round of applause. <clears throat> now, one of the great things about today is that it is an opportunity for us to celebrate, as Pastor Dan said, to celebrate what is right about Golden, our collective successes, to highlight what we've done well in light of the changing environment around us. It's about acknowledging the challenges that we face as a city and as a community and reminding ourselves of the success that we have had in tackling those challenges. Indeed, we're coming off of another fantastic year in Golden with so much to be proud of as a city. As we enter the 159th year of our founding of our great city, I wanna take a few minutes and recap for you some of the wonderful things that we've been able to accomplish together. The highlight of our year, without a doubt, has been the successful completion of the Linking Lookout project. The first of what we hope to be many improvements in the 6 and 93 corridor, this project is consistent with our golden plan for the corridor. Not only did this project accomplish its goals of reducing traffic congestion and, and improving uh, pedestrian safety, it came with a lot of social benefits as well. It served to connect our friends and neighbors in Beverly Heights with the rest of the community. It added a place for people to gather, have a picnic, rest, or simply just admire the surrounding views. Linking Lookout has been an award-winning project recognized by public works and engineering professional groups throughout our state. And it will serve as a model for other improvements in the corridor and around the state. In December, we launched a new tool for citizen engagement called Guiding Golden. Guiding Golden is an online platform that allows for additional engagement opportunities on important issues to the community without having to go out and attend another public meeting. Right now, residents can visit guidinggolden.com and learn more about issues, important issues to our community. Housing affordability, short-term rental regulations, or even our annual budget. And they can provide ideas and feedback on those issues. Guiding Golden will ensure that we are able to collectively continue to direct and manage change in the future. So I'll ask you, what is the website called? You didn't know there was gonna be a quiz, did you? <laughs> Guidinggolden.com. Another huge win for us this past year was a certain acquisition that we have been working on for almost the past decade. Due to the persistence of our community development director, Steve Glick, and the city's excellent financial position, we were able to acquire a key property on 23rd Street that will provide a much needed neighborhood park to the central neighborhood area of Golden. This neighborhood has been historically underserved and that there have been no convenient parks to walk to until now. Over the next year, we will work to budget funds to engage the community on future improvements to this park. So many great things have happened in Golden this past year. I've highlighted just a few of them for you. But if you'd permit me, I'd like to share a few more. But rather than hear me talk about them, take a look for yourself. 
We're seeing brand new up close video from Golden of the daring rescue of a 15 year old boy who fell 100 feet down a mine shaft today. Golden Fire in West Metro Fire. El incidente ocurrió alrededor de las 10 de la mañana. The hole itself was caving in. The victim had some spree uh, on his legs uh, that we had to dig out to get him out. So it was rather uh, dangerous. All new at nine as we inch closer to the 4th of July holiday, Golden Police cracking down on a form of noise pollution. And Molly neighbors now have police on their side. We're proud of our city and our department. Once you get to know us, you're going to find that we're a motivated team of dedicated men and women. Chief? Chief. <laughs> Breaking news tonight on this fire fight. Three wildfires burning in our state right now. This one sending up a lot of smoke near the Coors Brewery plant. Police are warning homeowners in the Heritage Dells neighborhood about this guy. Look at him. He's been raiding open trash cans. Tell me a little bit about the Golden Bike Library. It opens today, and it's Thursdays through Sundays, 10 to 4. Yes. Attention all Golden units. This will be the final radio transmission from dispatch at 911 10th Street. On behalf of Kathy, Tara, Sarah, Kelly, Heather, Christina, Joey, Jenny, Sharice, and Bess, and all the dispatchers that came before us for five decades, it's been an honor to serve alongside you. We all have fond memories of the laughter and tears we shared in this room, and we will carry those with us to our next chapter and our new home. So this is WNFT 544 and KVH 280, the communication center for Golden Police and Fire, signing off from 911 10th Street. Jeff Com Dispatch, you have the channel from here at 645. An antique dealer donated a collection of 65 photographs and postcards showing the city of Golden back in the 1960s. Hi, I'm Mark Dodge. We're here at the Golden History Museum and Park. We're in the middle of a major remodel. Check this out though. Over the summer, Golden was host to history in the uncovering. So we're standing at the archaeological site of Magic Mountain. We've brought Linking Lookout, the first project of the Golden Plan to life. Golden residents, city staff, and elected officials worked for decades toward this day. It took a village. The incredible rescue. A hiker trapped by a 1,500 pound boulder. Firefighters on the scene. You guys ready? Okay, all units ready for left. Their two hour operation in the snow and ice, flying her to safety. Incredible she survived that. Yeah. Situation. Well, and thank goodness for all of those rescuers braving Absolutely. that terrain. You know, I continue to remain uh, impressed by the quality of our public safety services here in Golden. It's probably the biggest responsibility that we have in city government, to ensure the safety of our residents and those that visit our city. You saw some footage of perhaps one of our more significant rescue uh, calls in recent memory, the rescue of a hike hiker trapped under a 1,500 pound boulder. Due to the efforts of our fire department, its volunteers and other first responders, we were able to save the young woman's life. Recently, she sent us a letter 
which in part reads, It's been a tough year, but I'm completely recovered and working on perfecting my walking skills with my prosthetic leg. I climbed again, and that changed everything for me. I will go back to Amsterdam in February to finish my PhD. You and everyone else involved in my rescue saved my life. I have no words to express my gratitude. She later wrote, my parents often tell me that they were so touched and impressed by how many people helped me and expressed sympathy. I'm already planning to come to Denver next year in autumn to meet everyone involved in my rescue to personally say thank you. It was because of the great work of our first responders here in Golden that this young lady from half a world away is alive today and can continue her passion for climbing and pursue her PhD. I couldn't be more proud of the efforts of our staff. Truly a job well done. In 2017, the city began a renewed focus on innovation and technology. We've created a new city department of innovation and technology and hired a skilled staff member to manage the department, Giles McCoy, who you've met earlier. This operation will focus on leveraging existing technologies and laying the groundwork for future technologies to move our city forward and ensure that we can continue to meet the needs of the future and provide efficient and responsive services to our community. Our vision is a city government that has the capability to utilize real-time information and data and be able to share that information with our citizens in order to make good decisions. It is a movement beginning in cities across the country, utilizing smart city technology to enhance our community for the benefit of our residents. You want to know where an open parking space is downtown? or maybe what the current traffic volumes are on Ford Street? Or perhaps you wanna know where that snow plow is and when it's gonna to get to your house or your business. Imagine understanding all of that with just a few punches of buttons on your computer or maybe even an app on your iPhone. The technology is there. It is being refined and it's moving fast and Golden should be a leader in developing and utilizing this technology for smaller cities. It will allow our citizens to better understand their own community and to do it in real time at their convenience. On short order, we will begin work on the North Washington Avenue Complete Streets project. This project is another community priority and one that has received significant public input through numerous public meetings. This corridor improvement will include enhanced safety measures for pedestrians and bicyclists, such as wider sidewalks, and designated bike lanes. The one thing that we can tell you about any significant construction project is that it's going to be painful. <laughs> but we also know that in the end, the result will be worth the temporary inconvenience. One of the great assets we have here in Golden is the Colorado School of Mines. Throughout the next year, we will continue to work with our friends at Colorado School of Mines as it looks to modernize portions of its campus and provide additional amenities for its students and staff. Since last summer, both the city and the university have been working on neighborhood and campus master planning engagement efforts. The input that we've received through these efforts and by working together collaboratively will help ensure the future success of School of Mines and of our adjacent neighborhoods. As you review some of the other great work that we have done, uh, I'm pleased that I can once again stand up here and tell you that the state of our city is strong. As I talked about at the outset, we're successful here in Golden because of people like all of you, people who come together, work with city government, work with business, other community organizations, to collectively direct and manage the inevitable change and evolution of our community. We have done it well in the past and we'll need to continue to work collaboratively as we address important issues like short-term housing regulations and housing affordability and the continued growth and development of our city and of course, flying shoes. 
I'm confident we can do it because we've done it before and we've done it well. It is truly what makes Golden special. Before I close, there is one very important city initiative that deserves special mention, and that is our Golden Investment Forum. This initiative is about engaging the community to identify and prioritize our future investment in Golden. I'd like to invite Steve Glick, our Community and Economic Development Director, to come to the podium to give you a little bit more background on this initiative and talk briefly about some of the upcoming uh, opportunities for participation. Steve. Thank you, Jason. So in addition to the short quiz earlier, there's homework. So you, you'll know that when you come to next time. One of the things we're most proud of working for you, working for Golden, is the fact that for the last three decades or so, City Council has been able to assign resources necessary to maintain all of our basic infrastructure. And not, all, not every community can do that. Not every community can say that. And frankly, there was a time when we couldn't say that. Um, Mr. Hartman's probably the only one on staff who remembers it, but it wasn't, it wasn't that unusual to not have enough funds for regular street paving, water and sewer line replacement. But we, we are fortunate that we have the resources to do that. And we also now face the opportunity of what investments should we make as a community to best achieve our Golden Vision values and our Golden Vision guiding principles. And so starting last summer, City Council appointed a citizen task force uh, with the exciting name of the Golden Investment Forum Task Force to try to engage the community and help do a couple things. One of the first ones is to identify what our priorities might be going forward for what, what I call discretionary infrastructure and amenity investment. Things that go above and beyond, things that make golden what it is. And to that end, at your desk, at your tables rather, many of you will see this postcard which has the um, familiar Guiding Golden logo on it. And so in addition to looking at all of the other Guiding Golden projects, I ask you to Go to the website, look at the Golden Investment Forum tile, and take our new survey. Look for the words over there that say, take our new survey. We're doing a really detailed survey where you have the opportunity to invest an anticipated surplus in revenues over the period of 2021 to 2030, about 15 million, it could actually be more, um, but about a million and a half dollars a year in totally discretionary capital investments and infrastructure. You can choose among many projects under these categories and you can um, program those funds. However, if you program more than $15 million worth of funds, you need to raise more money. So it also gives you the opportunity to talk about where the community might get more money if we needed it for these opportunities. Um, if you took this survey in the middle of March, I invite you to take it again because we've changed it a little bit. We made it simpler, easier to work through. So feel free. This is not going to be used by council as statistically valid. You won't get in trouble if you take it more than once. But I encourage you to take the new one. And because, it, um, full disclosure, it will take you at least 10 minutes to do it if you, if you really look carefully at it. Also at your table, there is a one-page piece of paper, not at the city tables, Sarah, <laughs> um, asking you to simply do a forced prioritization of eight or nine different categories of investment. And if you would rank them one to nine, with one being the most important, nine being the least, we will collect those afterwards and input it. And it will be one more data point for city council to consider as we go forward. Uh, this project has both short and long-term implications because every year, City Council has to program our capital resources out for a, about a 10-year period. So even though there are some bigger questions that will come out of it, we'll be using it as early as this summer and fall when City Council looks at the 10-year capital improvement program. So thank you very much. Back to the boss. <laughs> Please take a few minutes, give us your thoughts. That's an important topic, it's important about the future of our city and we need input from our community. Uh, so thank you, Steve. And what's the website again? GuidingGolden.com. Guidinggolden
I appreciate you giving me your, your time, your attention today. I'm thankful, continue to be thankful and grateful for the opportunity to be your city manager and to serve all of you and serve our great community. Thank you again. I hope to see you all real soon and have a great day. Those fun conversations, you have fun? Was it hard? No. Okay. What do you think of this sweater? Do you think that this is a good look for me or do you think I should just ditch it? It's really cute. I think yeah. I keep it. Keep it on. Oh. <laughs> Thank you. How about some high fives? Good job. That was fun. My friends at Shelton, that was fun. Good job. Now I gotta go back to class and keep learning. So you can take care of Golden in the future. See ya.